Hi and welcome to another video by Dina for Jumbo Designs. In this one I'm going to show you how I created my little hair picture. Uh, unfortunately technical issues, they've got the better of me today and I've missed part of the recordings. I had problems with the cameras and the computer and goodness knows what and power cuts. It was one of those days. The side parts of my picture, um, I've added texture with crumpled tissue glued on with gel medium and now I'm just adding a mixture of cadmium red and black. I'm not precious about my acrylic paints at all. The, they come from all over the place. I've got acrylic um, basics, Liquitex basics. I get them from craft shops. I use the works black and white and their gessos. Um, wherever I am, if I see something, especially if it's on sale, I pick it up. This, acrylic paints, some are very very thin, the cheap ones tend to be very very thin, so if you want a really heavy weight, uh, heavy weight paint with good covering power then you're better going for a more expensive brand. But I just put two coats of paint on, which is what I'm doing here, just adding that second layer to hide the little bits of white tissue paper that are still glowing through. I wanted the, this quite a uniform dark red colour. Um, so here I'm just carefully going around my hair. I did the hair in a silver pearl ink. It's like a 3D ink from um, Deocrafts. In hindsight, I would have put the silver on at the very end. I would have drawn the hair in pencil, done the painting, and then done the silver last. But I didn't, and we live and learn. And if I do one again, I'll put the silver on last. Here we are. My initial plan after doing lots of very fiddly mixed media collages was to do a simple straightforward contrast so the idea was to have my hair in this nice uniform beigey grey colour uh, the background on the sides of the red which is where the texture is and then behind the hair a pale bluey um, almost nicely blue colour to contrast nicely with the grey and the red but I changed my mind a couple of times, as you'll see through the video. It didn't end up anything like my initial plan. What I had pictured in my head, I didn't like when I painted it, so I changed it. So here we are. I'm spending quite a bit of time on this, because this is what I thought my final finish was going to be like. Very smooth, very even colour, with no brush marks. I really wanted it to have that very, very smooth illustrator type finish on it and you'll see in a minute when I'd finished it all I didn't like it. <laughs> that's very typical. So that, that's the base colour. There you can see I'm just cleaning off some of the paint off my the 3D silver that I've got on there. That was a problem for me all the way through this painting. If you ever do anything like this do your silver last. It's just a nightmare otherwise. So just putting just black it's a cheap acrylic black craft um, acrylic from somewhere or other into the eye and now I decided to, I need some dimension to this picture so I'm going in with different colours to think about adding some kind of 3D effect give the poor old hair some body to work with um, to make it a little bit more interesting so I'm not working from a photograph here at all, this is just making it up as I go along basically, as you can tell. So I'm just playing around until I get a, an effect that I like, a finish that I like, and changing the colours, changing the shading, changing where the ears are pointing. Um, so I had one ear pointing out towards me and one ear pointing to the left and that changes as well. Here's a shadow under the head. Again, I thought the poor thing looked a bit flat and boring without any dimension to it. So I'm adding, I'm using the colours that I've used on the side panels. So you can see I've got the red and the black that I had to paint down the sides of the picture. And I'm using those with the grey for the shadow to get that consistency across my picture. Just Again, just building up the shadows, building up the head to try and give him some kind of body to work with. And it's 
looking better. I'm getting happy with it as it's working along. So you can see now I'm getting those shadows in, getting him looking more realistic. And still building it up, building it up a um, little bit at a time. There we go. Just putting my paints to one side while I went off and did something else. Left him to dry. This is a, one of my spray paints. In that bottle there is a mixture of white and blue acrylic paint mixed with water and some airbrush medium. I mean, it makes my spray paints out of anything, depending on what I want them to do. So my background now is a very, very pale blue with white. And I've used some texture medium in there as well, so the paint has extra texture to it because I didn't I thought it needed some extra interest in the background because it's quite a big area just to have as a solid blank colour. So I put the texture medium in and here you can see I'm filling in the gaps with this very pale white and blue, building it up and as I'm going through with the texture medium I'm adding swirls and letting the brush marks show on this bit. So where I've gone round that hair carefully around the body, I'll go back in and roughen it up again. Some points it's a bit like icing a cake, you're trying to get those rough rough icing marks on the paintwork there. Again having to be really careful of that silver. Oh, I was cursing that silver at this point. And we're just going to finish that background with a very pale blue. So there we go, I've finished off the background and now I'm looking at the hair's face again and I'm starting to add just some more definition into the structure of the hair's face, trying to get the effect of the eyes, standing proud of the face, I'm not using a photograph at all, this is just purely from what I know about the structure of a hair or rabbit skeleton here, the eyes are quite proud. And I wanted him looking quite peaceful as well. Here we go, just putting in that colour, putting in, trying to build up, catching the light on the cheeks, and smoothing out those brush marks that have got a little bit too heavy there with the big soft mop brush. And now I'm having a good look. So now I'm going to be working on the hair's face again. Um, just putting the little black dots in where the whiskers come from, adding some more. It's gradually going darker to get the 3D effect. And on camera, this actually looks a lot better than it did in real life. <laughs> if you look at it now, thinking actually that doesn't look too bad, considering what comes next, it gets a lot worse before it gets any better. Trust me. Now I'm looking at it there, and it's not. It looks a lot better there than it did in real life. So what I did next it might shock it. I just blocked out the whole lot with a mixture of um, cadmium red and white and I got rid of the whole lot because I didn't like it. It did look very very shoddy in real life I must admit. It looks a lot nicer on camera. Um, so there I'm changing the colour because I thought I'd pick up the cadmium red that I've used on the side and see if that works, if I'm happy with that as a base colour. Which I wasn't. So I'm going in with some contrasting colours, some highlights, some lowlights to see if I prefer that. This is the whole thing about the creative process, isn't it? You can change your mind, you can do it over and over again until you get what you want. Then I thought I'd go back to my original idea of having a grey hair. Which actually, with the pink showing through, was quite effective. Um, if I'd worked on this one a bit longer, it might have been done. Now you can see now, I'm just going straight over all that silver paint. I've given up trying, spending ages going around it. I thought I'll just sort it, the problem out at the end, which I did do. So then I thought, nope, don't like that. So I've gone for the blue. I think it was Liquitex Bake 6 Cobalt Blue. Um, there we go, just a little bit of blue and black. So I'm putting in the shadows with that blue and the black. 
again going back through the process of building up the face and building up the 3D effect of my hair giving him some definition on the old ears keep swapping and changing, trying to build it up as I'm going along and have a, keep stopping and having a look at it this was a long process made a lot longer by my camera breaking and power cuts and oh, it's been one of those days where things, well, two days where things just kept going wrong on it now I went wrong and I'd blotted, tried to blot the grey out and showed the pink so I had to put more grey in it's one of those days where you just think I'm going to go and have a cup of tea <laughs> let everything just settle down and if I come back to it it might have sorted itself out anyway I was at the verge of stopping here and giving up on it as a bad job but I thought nope I'll keep going nothing ventured nothing gained you don't know what's going to happen at the end if you don't keep trying and all it needs is a little bit of time on it I thought right so while the hair was drying off I got out some copper paint, copper metallic paint, it was from the works, two pound I think or three pounds, with a little sponge dabber, adding some metallic to the sides. So I'd extra interest in bring out the texture on the sides. I'm very frugal with my paint, you can see me there putting it back in the tube, waste not want not. That created a really nice effect, I was very pleased with that effect and now I'm going back into my hair with the black building up my hair adding these little whisk the dots of the whiskers again there we go I'm using here a paper stubby thing for blending pencil drawings I couldn't get my paintbrush to give me quite a nice definite circle that I liked then I realised I've put far too many black dots when I got carried away, so I tried to blot them out and then I had to paint them over where they'd smudged in. So it was a, an endeavour, this painting. It wasn't something that went to plan at all, but that's what it's all about. If you can enjoy it, you've got to play with it. Now then, heads up guys, um, the uh, camera didn't record a whole section of my painting here. I changed painting and I painted the style completely. I went for a primary blue with white and black and I've added loads more of that silver paint in as well to get the definition back and I've decided to go make my brush strokes really visible. Add extra interest all the way through my hair. Yeah, this is where my camera failed on me again I'm afraid. I thought it was recording and it wasn't lost about, I don't know, ages, at least half an hour, possibly an hour's recording, went lost in the ether somewhere. But here we go, I'm building up and just gradually blending in the blue, the black, the white. And now I'm beginning to feel really happy with it. It's more like my kind of painting, this. But I've done it again, I've put the silver in far too early because now I've got to go in and sort out around the nose part which means I've got to paint around all those little black dots and the silver which I knew at this point and I was thinking oh no <laughs> but I thought I'll leave it till last so I've gone in a bit and I'm turning it down and keep adding and toning it down until I get what I'm after and the difference I'm quite happy here you can see I'm painting a lot faster my hands moving a lot faster than even if I am on 200% faster because I know it's, it's working it's what I want to do there we go just building it in so now I've changed the direction of the, that ear behind front one's facing us and the other one's twisted around to the side to hear what's coming from to the right hand side of the hair just keep it going so get it looking the way I want it to look just it just shows you persevere persevere even if something's going completely and utterly pear shaped keep going you never know what it, it might turn out into at the end this is absolutely nothing like my original plan.
at all. Absolutely nothing. Now I've realised I've got to go in and sort out the nose. Muzzle? Nose? I'm not quite sure what you call it, in a hair or a rabbit. So I'm <laughs> I'll go back to the ears because I can cope with the ears while well, I think about what to do with the uh, the muzzle. But yeah, I'm going to have to go in and do it at a second. Oh, yeah. I didn't show you that bit. That's it. That was another technical mess up there. Where the... Uh, I tell you, I'd, uh, the camera was just dying on me all the time. There's, you can see me using that silver paint, going back in, adding the extra definition. What I did in the end, I just painted white, very pale blue white, over the whole muzzle area. I thought it'd be, I tried going around it, it just wasn't working, it looked ridiculous. So I just painted it all in, and then I've added the whiskers again with the silver paint. And you know what? I really, really like this picture now. It was a bit of a, a trial for me, but we got there in the end. And I just signed it in the corner, which you can't see, but it's signed already and finished. Hey! And there's a picture of me holding my hair. I'm very proud of my picture. My husband's comment was, well, the sides aren't very straight, are they? Some people, they don't understand art, do they? Join me again next time on Gen Bear Designs.